Everyday Bible study. We're looking at the Word of God, and we're in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, and we're looking at the Word of God. We're looking at what Jesus is saying from the Olivet Discourse, and this is uh, where he was teaching his disciples about the end of time, and the um, uh, where he was uh, teaching on the Mount of Olives, and uh, he's talking about things that are to come uh, there at the end. We're going to start with verse 32, and it says, uh, From the fig tree, uh, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out leaves, you'll know that summer is near. So that when you see all these things, you know that is near and at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will not pass away, but my words will uh, not pass away. So Jesus is telling us here that uh, his words are eternal and uh, the words of uh, various people here on earth and the things of this earth are temporary. This earth is temporary, but uh, the words of God will last forever. Now let me get a little bit more in detail on this. Uh, he says we need to look at the lesson of the fig tree. Uh, you see a fig tree as it, uh, uh, and I've got a tree that's sitting here in front of me here. Um, and we have various apple trees and various fruit trees. We don't really have fig trees in eastern Kentucky, but uh, this is true of just about any tree. Uh, fig trees were common where Jesus was uh, teaching from, and they had olive trees. They were on the Mount of Olives, and they, they, those trees would raise olives. Uh, but he says, when you see the little leaves come out in springtime, and you see those leaves are tender, and the, the trees will grow leaves, uh, then he says, then you know that summer's coming right around the corner. And it's late summer here in Kentucky as we read this. And it says, so when you see these things, uh, you know that it is near at the very gates. So you can look at the signs of the times and uh, know that there, it's getting closer to the time that Jesus is coming back. And Jesus uh, told us that when you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see all these famines and natural disasters and earthquakes, uh, various places. These are like birth pains and when these get closer and closer together we know that uh, the coming of Jesus Christ may be very very soon. And it said here, heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. But he said prior to that, it said, truly I say to you this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Well, you say, um, you know this happened hundreds of years ago when Jesus said these things and uh, that generation is surely gone. But what he's talking about is the generation of the church. Uh, he's referring to that the church will still be going on and uh, still be alive. And uh, they, there will be people that are in this church, uh, generation of the church, uh, that will, uh, when these things are happening. And, you know, uh, God's kingdom here on earth is his church. And, um, you know, uh, the church is alive and well. Sometimes it gets a little weak. Sometimes it has problems. But uh, it, uh, the church has not passed away. And we are in this church generation. And could the coming of the Lord be in our lifetime? Uh, it's possible. But uh, we've got people on Facebook right now that's talking about Jesus coming back September the 23rd. And I don't know if this uh, particular lesson will air before that. But um, I want to tell you a little bit about this. And you say, will Jesus come back on the 23rd of September? Well, we're, we're going to see what Jesus has to say about that. Uh, but concerning the day and the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, uh, but the Father only. So that answered that question. Um, Jesus himself, at the time when he was on earth, did not know the day that he was going to come back. Now, he may know the day now, but uh, that was not provided to him by uh, God the Father. And so the angels in heaven didn't know. And said, uh, for as were the days of Noah, so will be for the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, uh, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day where Noah uh, entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. Uh, so will be the coming of man. And most people are not looking for Jesus Christ to come back. Uh, they're doing things like they were in the days of Noah. Uh, it was a very sinful time and they were busy sinning and they were just acting normal. They were, uh, you know, uh, getting married and uh, they were eating and drinking and just doing normal stuff. 
And uh, they were not watching for the things of God. They were watching uh, the things around them and wrapped up in each other and wrapped up in themselves. And um, said this will be like a, uh, a sign of Noah. Uh, said he, Now this is talking about when Jesus is coming back. said, then there will be two in the field and one will be taken and one left. So uh, some people will be prepared for Jesus to come back and some will not. And uh, the question is, are you prepared? Uh, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? And if you were walking in a field and Jesus was to come back, would you be the one that was taken up uh, or would you be the one that was left behind? And that'd be very scary to be left behind. It'd be very exciting to be taken up uh, by Jesus Christ and be taken to heaven. And uh, said two women will be grinding at a mill and one will be taken up and one left. Therefore, uh, stay awake for you do not know what uh, day the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, uh, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not expect. He's going to come like a thief in the night. And uh, most people will not be looking for Jesus when he comes back. Uh, but he's going to surprise very, very many people. But he wants us to be awake, to be watching for his second coming. Uh, who then is faithful and wise servants whom his master set over his household to give uh, them their food at the proper time? Blessed is the servant uh, whom his master will find doing uh, so doing when he comes. So we need to be active in the activities of God. We need to be serving God and we need to be looking for his coming. Truly I say to you, uh, um, he will uh, set himself over all possessions. But if the wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with the drunkards, uh, the master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect, and at an hour he does not come, uh, does not, an hour he does not know, and will cut him to pieces and put him with the hypocrites. And in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you're not prepared for Jesus uh, when he comes, then I got to hit something here on the screen. Uh, then uh, we're going to be in a situation where uh, we're uh, not prepared, and uh, uh, those that are not prepared for Jesus when He comes, uh, they will face hell. The that place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is talking about hell, and Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes to the Father except through Him. Uh, he is the only way that we to gain salvation, the only way uh, that uh, we're to be seen right in the eyes of God. And He's the one that God sends for our salvation. And if we do not accept Him, i got to scare away a bee here, <laughs> uh, then uh, we have to be prepared. Uh, but so many are not prepared. John with the Everyday Bible Study. And uh, if you notice, uh, I'm in a different location, different shirt. And uh, one thing that uh, we had a little bit of camera problems and we weren't able to finish up the last uh, film. So we're going to uh, conclude it right here. And we got done with the passage of scripture. Uh, of course, it was talking about uh, uh, no man knowing the hour of the day of the second coming of Christ. And that's true. No man does know the hour of day. And uh, but um, we need to be. Uh, ready for Jesus to come back. Jesus could come back at any time. He could come back tonight. He could come back tomorrow. He could come back next week. He could come back next month. Or could come in an, next year or in a number of years. Uh, the fact is, we really don't know. But the one thing that we do know is uh, if we look at the signs that are in the scripture, the coming of Jesus Christ will be soon. And uh, it is likely to be soon. Uh, we see most of the signs uh, that the scripture is telling us being fulfilled and uh, there are no uh, prophecies that are in the Bible about Jesus coming back uh, that have to be fulfilled uh, in order for Christ to come back he literally could come at any time and uh, the other thing that uh, if you remember in the passages that we read here in this Olivet Discourse was that Jesus talking about uh, the things to look for uh, the wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, disasters, that sort of thing, and uh, refer to them as birth pains. And uh, we're seeing those sort of things 
And uh, you say, well, those sort of things happened all throughout history, and that's true. But these things are happening more frequently. Uh, we've had um, a number of uh, large hurricanes just hit back to back to back. Uh, Puerto Rico here in the United States just recently got hit with two hurricanes. The first one nearly wiped out the island. The second one just about totally wiped it out. Uh, Category 5 hurricane uh, knocked this entire island, which is part of the United States, uh, knocked the entire electrical system out. And they're finding it nearly impossible to get food and water and supplies into a number of their people. And uh, so it's uh, turning into a humanitarian crisis. These uh, disasters are so bad. And of course we see rumors of war. We see with uh, uh, North Korea threatening to blow up uh, a number of people, Japan, Korea, uh, United States, uh, uh, just uh, whoever. And it uh, looks like they're just itching to blow up a nuclear bomb. And uh, the man who's in charge may not be sane. And uh, you know, there's uh, wars being happening all over the, all, you know, a number of other places too. ISIS is at war with uh, humanity, and uh, just uh, terrible times. So uh, when we see these birth pains come closer together, and these things start happening on a rapid basis, that is a sign that Jesus is coming, maybe soon. And the question is, are you ready? And uh, if you're uh, born again, if you know Jesus Christ as, as your Savior and Lord. Uh, if you have uh, believed on him as your Savior, uh, believe that he died on the cross, believe that he rose from the dead, and tuck, you, tuck your sins in your place. And if you have repented of your sins, and uh, you've asked God to save you, and you believe on Christ, uh, then you're ready. Um, that's uh, what it takes, is that we have to have faith in Christ, because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way that God has set up uh, to uh, provide uh, a way for man's kind sins to be redeemed. And uh, if you've got sin in your life, uh, then uh, it needs to be taken care of. You need to have a Savior to save you from your sins. And uh, it talks about in the book of Revelation, talks about the new Jerusalem or heaven in the end times. And it says very simply uh, that no unclean thing will enter into it. And uh, if you are an unclean thing, then uh, you're not getting to go. But uh, here's the good news. Uh, we don't have to depend upon our own righteousness. Uh, we can be forgiven of each and every sin. And Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins on the cross. And he died in our place. Uh, so, uh, and he was sinless. He had absolutely no sin. Jesus Christ would meet the qualification that no unclean thing would come in because he's not unclean in any way. But you said he took all those sins upon him. That's right, but he died. He sacrificially gave up his own life in order uh, to take that penalty of sin and to sacrifice himself um, to be the ultimate perfect sacrifice for mankind. And uh, so he was the, uh, the lamb that was slain. He was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And he did that because he loved us. He did that because he loves you. And uh, he is uh, ready to accept you into his kingdom and provide a way for you to come to God so that you can know salvation. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And thank you for this uh, uh, fact that Jesus Christ gave up his life, gave up his life blood, and had his uh, body sacrificed by evil men. Uh, so that he could become this perfect sacrificial lamb uh, to be uh, slaughtered in our place so that uh, he would take up the sins of the world, take up my sin and everybody's sin that's listening to this and upon him and pay the price so that we don't have to face your wrath, but we can have our sins redeemed and we can be part of your family and live with you forever. And Lord, we pray that many people will believe upon Jesus Christ uh, as the Son of God and the one that can save them from their sins and that uh, they'll believe that he died for their sins and believe that he rose again and they will confess that and uh, confess that with their mouth that they believe and that they will be saved and that you'll forgive them of their sins and that you'll impart Jesus's righteousness to them so that they can be made clean in your eyes and their sins can be forgotten can be cast as far as the east is from the west and that they can be uh, made perfect for you. And 
Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you uh, for all that you're doing in those people's uh, uh, hearts and minds that are watching this right now. And we pray that you give them the faith and they'll exercise that faith and that they will be drawn to you and that they will come to you and ask you for salvation and believe on Jesus Christ for that salvation. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us with this uh, uh, version of the Everyday Bible Study. It got split into two parts, but we're going to try to put them together. And uh, we'll just, uh, uh, the next video will hopefully be a little bit more normal. Uh, but uh, uh, this, uh, we have this wonderful message, and we're getting deep into the life of Jesus Christ, getting close to the crucifixion, and uh, just the wonderful things that he did for us, and terrible things that he had to go through to do it. But uh, uh, he, he sacrificed, gave his life freely, uh, for, because he loves you and loves me. So until next time, this is John with Everyday Bible Study, praying that you have a great day.